Ate, hindi po talaga ako marunong mag-drawing. Ate, hindi po talaga ako magaling sa mat. Nasa Arki na ako, pero di pa rin ako marunong mag-drawing. Nasa Arki na ako, pero di pa rin ako magaling sa mat. But, are those really the things that you should think of before taking architecture? Or, is it really the hardest thing about architecture? Let's see. the final week na hindi pa sure kung pasado pero baka naman po. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out anything. So, you might be here because you're an RP student or you're planning to take architecture or trip mo lang. But this is not a nitpicking video. This is not a rant video. This might be some of the things that I want to hear if I'm planning to take architecture or some things na makakarelate talaga ako. Like, that's so Oh, cool. no! <laughs> Growing in math is always connected with architecture. Like, kapag may tinanong ka talaga, laging nababanggit tong dalawang to or like, magpa-plano, ganyan. Especially Especially kapag medyo tinatamad, mag-explain yung kausap mo. Or, di ba, kapag kasi nagtanong ka lang, tapos napadaan ka lang, ang sasabihin lang talaga sa'yo is magdo-drawing, mag-amat. Ayun nga, magpa-plano. But what makes it difficult? Bakit laging sinasabi ang hirap-hirap naman sa RQ? Although, I have a video before na rants ng mga RQ student. This is like a more updated version since I'm a second year now. And mas masamit na sa ulo. I'll blatantly say, that the drawing is not the hardest thing about architecture and I won't take that away. Drawing is very important especially kapag first year ka pa lang kasi you have this VSCOM subject so parang nakikita mo yung mga classmates mo ay magaling sila mag-drawing. You feel like that's the parameter kung sino mas magaling sa architecture and hindi. This is from a point of view of someone na in modesty aside marunong naman mag-drawing before mag-take ng architecture. But bakit ako nahihirapan kung drawing lang pala talaga yung mahirap dito, di ba? Come to think of it. Here's the fact, hindi ka makakapag-drawing if you don't have time to draw. And what I mean by that is, hindi kasi drawing yung pinaka nauunang step kapag nagpa-plano, especially sa design subject, which is the most important subject in architecture. Kailangan mo munang pagdaanan yung ibang stages ng planning. Although, may mga sketches sa una, like, kalat-kalat lang talaga ng sketches, like random ideas na nasa isip mo. It is important, yes, kasi drawing is the fastest translation of your brain papunta sa paper na para makita mo kung ano yung idea mo. Pero, here, hindi ka makakapag-perspective if you don't have time, I swear. Kasi minsan, there are times na hindi kami naabot sa perspective. Sobrang minadali lang yung perspective namin dahil nag-spend kami ng sobrang daming time sa planning. Kung wala kang time and kung wala kang discipline para gawin yung lahat ng stages ng planning, hindi ka makakaabot sa perspective because that is the last thing that we do. Ayun, also given that we have technologies nowadays, so yung iba din naman talaga, especially sa actual na, diba, tumagamit na din talaga sila ng digital. The advantage lang talaga nun, mas mabilis yung translation papunta sa papel, mas naiintindihan kapag naidrawing mo ng maayo. Pero it develops through time naman. At hindi mo naman talaga pwedeng unahin yung perspective or yung buong itsura na ng bahay bago ka pa makagawa ng mga plano like floor plan, section elevation, lahat-lahat-lahat yan. At kung uunahin mo yung perspective at trick mo talaga yung gawin, sobrang ultra mega 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 big brain mo doon. <laughs> Kasi pictures of our dream house is available on the internet and the blink of an eye. Kahit anong gusto mong itsura ng bahay, pwede mong makita sa internet. But the thing is, maayos ba yung plano ng bahay na yun? Baka kasi, pagpasok mo ng bahay, bowl ka agad yung nasa harap mo. That is a bit over. It can happen in real life. Kasi I actually saw a plan on the internet last last week na hindi ka makakapasok ng banyo hanggat hindi ka nadaan ng public na bathroom. Like, imagine this one. If mag-asawa kayo dun sa bahay, tapos may bisita yung asawa mo na nakilabas ng mother nature dun sa toilet nyo at gusto nang matulog ng partner mo, hindi siya makakapunta sa bedroom hanggat hindi pa siya nadaan dun sa bathroom. So, imagine that one. Eh, kung antok na antok na siya, kailangan niya pang intayin yung tao dun sa CR para matapos. Eh, hindi mo masya-showcase ng bonggang bongga yung drawing skill mo, especially sa design, if hindi ka pa natatapos sa 
planning. Second thing is, paano mo ang problema mo is yung technical drawing mismo. Ang pangit ng mga linya mo, bali-bali ko, ganyan. And that is exactly my struggle when I'm in first year. Kasi, in modesty aside, again, okay naman talaga ako kapag drawings lang, ganun. Medyo mabilis din talaga ako mag-sketch, mag-drawing. My weakness is kapag technical na yung drawing. Especially kapag may mga sukat na yung drawing, ganun, medyo naduduling talaga ako dun. I swear, that is the thing na na-realize ko din talaga na matututunan. Because I really admire my friend before na sobrang galing sa technical drawing and akala ko hindi ko yun kayang gawin. It really just takes some practice. And kapag paulit-ulit mo nang ginagawa, especially yung technical drawing, masasanay ka na din. Minsan pag may nakikita kang bagay, parang nagsusukat na ng automatic yung mata mo. So, second thing is the math subject in architecture. So, I'm not really good in math, pero medyo nakakausad naman ang konti, I guess. And may nagtatanong before na nakapag-take man lang ba daw ako ng calculus subject tapos na ba daw ako doon? Yes, tapos na po ako. If wala kayo masyadong idea sa senior high school, there's a subject in senior high school na basic calculus and pre-calculus. So, even before I take architecture, nakapag-take na ako ng calculus. I'm done with integral and differential calculus when I was in first year. Now, I'm also done with statics of rigid bodies. I guess. Kasama din talaga sa architecture yung math subject. Kasi even sa mga design subject, uh, magdodrawing ka, kailangan mo munang mag-compute bago ka makapag-drawing ng floor plan. Maybe now, you're not experiencing it if you're in first year architecture. Kasi pag-residential pa lang, minsan wala pang space programming. But now, the time in second year, especially kapag version na yung dine-design, kailangan mo na talagang mag-compute bago ka pa makapaggawa ng floor plan. Kasi we have the space programming programming nga. There are also structures that requires a specific square meter sa kada room, like kunyari sa clinic. It is required to have a 15 square meter pharmacy. Kailangan mong computein kung 15 square meter na ba yung nagawa mo and kailangan mo i-compute kung ilan ba yung tao dun sa space na yun, ilan ba yung furniture dun sa space na yun. I-compute mo kada furniture. That actually requires basic math. Ha, basic? Ang kapal. Actually requires basic math. I'm serious with that. Pero, kailangan mo minsan tiyagain kasi actually sobrang dami ng furniture dun sa room na yun. So, kailangan mo isa-isahin yung furniture na yun para malaman kung kasha ba talaga sila dun sa room and yes, sinusukat siya isa-isa. So, so what do I think is the hardest thing about architecture? I will bet it's the discipline. Some would say, alam ko na yan, kaya ko na yan, madidiscipline ko yung sarili ko kapag nandun na ako. The reason why I'm saying this is because this is still our struggle until now. Sobrang detalye ng plano. And sometimes even your family members are a bit puzzled with what you're doing kasi overnight mo dati sa family reunion, pwedeng maging one hour na lang, mapapadaan ka na lang dahil may kailangan ka pang tapos sa bahay. Tungduk-tung din talaga yung mga details nila. So kapag medyo taliwas yung utak mo ng onte, medyo mawawala ka. We humans nowadays, one of the struggle that we have is this focus. Umiikli yung attention span natin. Nag-aaral tayo, tapos bigla tayo mapupunta dito sa social media, nagpi-play tayo, tapos maya-maya kumakanta ka na ganyan. Ang madaming bagay na nakakapag-consume din ang time natin. So, it is so important to have this discipline sa time para matapos mo yung ginagawa mo and and also, there are a lot of extraneous variables, especially now na online. The reason why I'm saying this is not to scare someone or not to feel like an entitled archie girl dahil hindi pa nga ako nakaka-graduate. I just hope we can ask ourselves if we can still work kahit na sobrang sakit sa batok. Nasala talaga siya. Or if puyat. Puyat is not actually a requirement, but it requires multiple hours of work on a day without distractions. It requires working kahit na natapunan ng kape yung plate mo, nag-crash yung autocad, nag-crash yung sketch up. But yeah, I'm serious with that. It really requires discipline and emotional intelligence and able for you to finish your work. So yeah, I guess that's all for this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and see you on my next big flying plates. Okay pa ba ayaw dyan na? Okay pa ba? Ang galing natin. Belated happy birthday to JR. Thank you for the support. And to Matthew Lapaz and his RK meme page. You should like that page for more RK memes. And also my page for some giveaways. So.